Hey guys, Basil here with BTECT and this is the Huawei Mate 9 Porsche design. The Porsche design Mate 9 is running pre-production software, so this is non-final, but I have been using it for about a week now and I can say a few things for sure, and most of them are very, very positive. So I'm gonna kick off my review by talking about the design as I usually do, and this is a beauty, especially when you factor in the fact it's got 4,000 milliamps of battery under the hood and 256 gigabytes of storage. You've got a metal frame, curved glass screen, fingerprint scanner, and capacitive button below the screen, two capacitive buttons either side, eight megapixel front camera, Porsche design insignia up at the top, Porsche design logo around the back. The brushed metal looks really good, doesn't attract fingerprints too readily, um, and it's also got relatively flat sides which make it nice and easy to grip onto. It isn't as small as the S7 Edge, so it doesn't have quite as good screen to bezel ratio, but it does cram in 400 more milliamps, so that definitely lends to explain it. It also is not waterproof for anyone looking for a waterproof phone. Highlights up at the tops and infrared blaster for air remote control functionality, down at the base USB-C, 3.5 mil jack and a loud speaker. All right, the design, big thumbs up, feels premium, and it also ships with this case right here. It is a window view case, so you have that kind of functionality. It isn't a touch sensitive one, but in itself, the fact it ships with it is a nice value add. As far as the user interface goes, you've got Android 7 with a Motion UI 5. And this is a new version of Motion UI. It has a load of cool stuff that is new to a Motion UI, like a two-tier notification tray. You can also reintroduce your home screen um, uh, apps tray. So if I tap home screen style, you can see drawer is an option here. So your application's drawer can be reintroduced. Me personally, I'm actually okay with a Motion UI without an application's drawer. You can also probably see, in spite of the fact I have two capacitive buttons either side, I'm doing a load of gestures on the fingerprint scanner. There is a new way of interacting with a fingerprint scanner now that it's at the front and not around the back like most Huawei devices. You can long press to go home, you can swipe left to multitask, and you can uh, tap it to go back. So once you get those down in your head, it tends to work pretty well, a little bit less responsive than I would have hoped, but fingers crossed final production software will be a little bit more responsive. Still, easy enough to remember. Aside from the like split screen multitasking, you can also have multiple instances of the same application. It's called App Twin, so you can have two Facebook accounts, two WhatsApp accounts, etc. Perfect to take full advantage of the dual SIM slots under the hood. When it comes to stability, I've been getting really, really good performance out of this thing. Um, notifications tray every now and then does grump at me, um, and generally speaking, the camera is the area that I'm finding it significantly worse than the Mate 9, specifically in video. The image stabilizer just doesn't seem to kick in. But I'm not really too fussed about that because I have been using the Mate 9, so I'm gonna report on the camera on that seeing as they're identical modules. Let's carry on talking about performance. I'm gonna start off by opening Antutu, and what surprised me was the fact that this didn't benchmark as well as I'd hoped it would. As you can see, an Antutu with a Kirin 960 and the six gig of RAM, it still comes in at number 20. For a 1,400 pound device, if you're getting this for benchmarking specs alone, then you're probably not gonna want to get this. But if you're getting anything for benchmarking specs alone, you are fool, because benchmarking is artificial tests. Without six gig of RAM, I didn't find I had any issues doing anything. Jumping in and out of games, I don't know if this will work now. Yeah, you can see, like, I had their game code for freaking ages ah, and I died. But what that does show is that for multitasking, six gig of RAM, Kirin 960, performance in general, you're not gonna have any issues with this thing. What really matters is that 256 gig of storage for any gamers out there, because you will have a big, big task filling this thing up. Admittedly though, this is not micro SD expandable. Right, so now we've talked about that, and let's talk about gaming in terms of ergonomics. 5.5 inches, that's perfect, as is the stereo speakers and the performance. So I can't really think of many devices out there that are better for gaming than this. The iPhone 7 is really great for gaming, but it doesn't have that gorgeous, gorgeous AMOLED punchy poppy screen. Although it does have uh, really nice speakers. Um, as for the Samsung side of stuff, you've got a mono speaker at the base, so holistically it may not be quite as good. Um, HTC 10 is really good, but yeah, so you get what I mean. This could be one of the best gaming devices out there in spite of those 
benchmarks. When it comes to remaining connectivity, that infrared blaster up at the top is a very, very nice touch. It's got the fastest um, LTE speeds around as well, and the dual SIM slot, dual 4G SIM slots, USB-C at the base for the ultimate and future proofing when it comes to connectivity as well. What's also really cool about it is the camera story. Eight megapixels at the front, 1.9 aperture. Um, around the back, you've got uh, two cameras. One's 20 megapixels, one is 12 megapixels. Huawei's shooting modes are always so extensive. Swipe in from the left and you can see you've got a whole load of them right through from manual to monochrome. The monochrome pictures from this look beautiful, by the way. Um, jumping out of that though, and the sheer picture quality is great. I'm in pro mode actually, so I can flip out of pro mode take a picture, zoom in on it. Um, and instantly details on point. When the lighting is good, the pictures are great. When the lighting drops, pictures are okay. The image stabilization does a really good job of compensating. It actually performs much better than I thought I would when I heard it had a 20 megapixel sensor. Um, so I'm generally really impressed. The Mate 9 has performed better than the Mate 9 Porsche design. But like I said, this is a software build behind. When it comes to video, it can shoot up to 4K resolution. And it uh, does so with four image stabilization kicking in um, for the Mate 9. And you can see the video samples that we've done comparing it to an iPhone. It does have a technically two times lossless zoom. Um, I found that worked pretty well. It had better lossless zoom than the iPhone 7 when it comes to distance shot 7 plus, but it didn't have quite as good a zoom when it came to macro shots. Now moving into the resolution that you can actually take pictures, I can turn off wide aperture mode and you can see this takes right through from 20 megapixels down to six. The wide aperture mode also works really well. That's a blurred background, sharp foreground. Works better in low light than the iPhone and has some versatility there. However, if you do just want to point and shoot portraits, I still would probably pick the iPhone. Um, it just gets portraits that little bit better. So gaming, camera, everything on this thing is really, really good so far. How about that battery? 4,000 milliamps at 5.5 inches. Yeah, it's no surprise that this thing is a goer. It lasts a full day without any sweat whatsoever and it easily borders into two, two, uh, two days. So one and a half days was pretty much what I was getting and I'm a power user. So if you're a more moderate user, you could probably eke out two days, which is great. Ultimately though, this is a super, super expensive device. You are paying in a big, big way for the Porsche design branding up top and the around the back. But what's nice about this, as opposed to a lot of other luxury phones, you do also get an awesome smartphone under the hood. Admittedly, there are a few stability issues with the fact that it isn't running final production software. Um, so you can take this review with a pinch of salt, but ultimately, while the downsides are there, you don't have a memory card slot, this isn't waterproof, it's super expensive, and you do have a slight camera bump as well, the positives definitely outweigh them. That's great imaging quality, oodles of storage under the hood, a fantastic battery, and great performance across the board. So that's been my review of the Huawei Mate 9 Porsche design. A really good phone, it's also a really expensive phone. If you did like this video, click that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's how you'll stay on top of everything we do. If you've got any more questions about this phone, fire them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching BTECT.